think that helped me finish Poison Ivy after five years. Hello everybody, my name is Brooklyn, otherwise known as the Dramatic Otaku. Today I am dressed as the lovely Sailor Mercury transformation pen included and today we are doing a very special new cosplay build by the time this video ends it will be possibly a year from now i don't know but for context this is being recorded at the start of july my current six hatsune miku designs because i am planning to do hatsune miku for this cosplay build as you've read in the title are currently in the concept phase but I do have one particular cosplay build for Hatsune Miku that I will be doing. But before that, if you could please like and subscribe, I would very much appreciate it. You'd be helping supporting me and the channel and helping me create more videos like this where I get to make epic cosplay builds for you guys. So I'm very excited about this cosplay build and the concept I have for this cosplay. So let's get into the six concepts of Hatsune Miku that I have cosplay wise. I do want to complete all of these at some point, but we are just going to be focusing on my one most conceptual version of Hatsune Miku. So let's just jump into it. So the first three versions of Hatsune Miku are the most well-known versions of Hatsune Miku. So the first version is the classic Hatsune Miku that has the technological bodysuit, the little skirt, all of the technological headphone stuff, the classic Hatsune Miku. The second version is a more casual version of Miku. I will be basing this off of one of the figures, I think. One of the special edition figures that have like the comfy pajama looks. The third version is bacterial contamination. Now, ah! I love, I don't, I'm not huge on the song Bacterial Contamination. I was once scared um, by the song concept because it was in a video called The Creepiest Vocaloid Songs There Are and that spooked me away from listening to the song. Again, the song isn't my favorite, but the version of Miku is. I think making this cosplay of Hatsune Miku would be so fucking cool. But I think I do definitely need to hone my skills a bit more for this version of Hatsune Miku as I will have to make a mask with bits coming out of it that will have to be made out of foam and I haven't yet worked with foam so that will be in the next coming years. But specifically with version 3 it has become a slowly upcoming interest for me especially as I've been delving more into the horror genre with anime and manga so bacterial contamination has really piqued my fancy as one of Hatsune Miku's music video looks so I'm very excited to work on that eventually but none of those three are what we are doing today I do have obviously three more versions of Hatsune Miku to share but the fourth version is the one that we will actually be doing but before I mention the fourth version I want to mention the fifth and sixth version of my Hatsune Miku ideas and I'm not doing it out of order because this is the order that I came up with the Hatsune Miku's in. So, first of all, I will say version 5 of Hatsune Miku is a cyberpunk version, which is a bit ironic today to say because she is the digital idol Hatsune Miku. So, having a cyberpunk version of Hatsune Miku is a little bit of an ironic twist but this particular cosplay is based off of space age trends and trip jeans so i very much want to try this version of hatsune miku because i think it would be so freaking awesome to see a more punk version of hatsune miku obviously we do have more emo and punk versions of hatsune miku but something that's solely mine in terms of punk miku would be totally awesome personally from my opinion this was also influenced by this teal satin that I got secondhand from my aunt. I have the goal to get rid and use of all the satins and fabrics that my aunt has given me so that unlike all of my family members before me, I don't have a whole wall of unused fabric or a whole room of unused fabric. So I try to find characters or cute outfits to, outfits to use for these fabrics and thus, my idea for Hatsune Miku. And number six is Cherry Blossom Miku. 
I have to. If, if you're a Hatsune Miku cosplayer, at one point you're gonna cosplay Cherry Blossom Miku. <laughs> However, I won't be making a Cherry Blossom Cyberpunk or Bacterial Contamination version of Hatsune Miku today. No, in fact, I will be making a City Pop Hatsune Miku today. And I'm very, very excited to do. So, the so version floor is this Shore era slash early Heisei era. 80s to 90s city pop inspired Hatsune Miku. The outfit design that I want to use is heavily inspired by the fashion of the 80s pop idol Chisato Moritaka and possibly that of Seiko Matsuda. And when I say that, I mean the outfit that I want to make is almost a one for one copy of one of Chisato Moritaka's outfits. <laughs> Specifically this one of a blazer and skirt combo that I find absolutely fucking adorable. When thinking of what to do with the teal satin that I had previously mentioned, my initial thought was to make a Hatsune Miku tie, thus the idea to do Hatsune Miku in the first place, but when going on Pinterest to look for ideas, this is the first image that popped up on just my general feed and I saw it because I'd been saving more city pop idol fashion trends to my cosplay to my cosplay board and instantly I fell in love with the concept of a city pop 80s Showa Heisei Hatsune Miku. <laughs> so obviously I will be trying my very damned hardest to recreate this outfit by oh this outfit worn by Chisato Moritaka Except, obviously, this is in pink and black. I will try and be recreating it in blue and... My one's gonna be blue and grey, okay? <laughs> well, I'll be recreating this silhouette at, very at the very least in teal and grey. <laughs> but, of course, how am I doing this? So... Fun fact, I was using this cosplay to film a short film, um, or I was using the creation of this cosplay to film a short film, so a lot of the shots are gonna seem artsy fartsy, and it's simply because I don't sound like me right now. Anyway, it is simply because I, it was supposed to be for that film, it was not supposed to be a video, but I wanted to make a video surrounding this cosplay, so obviously I kinda had to use the shots from that film. As I was make, making a replica style cosplay, I need to find as many reference images as possible to see, if, see the ins and outs of this outfit so I can reverse engineer it and make it myself. First was the colour reference for ha from Hatsune Miku herself, with the secondary reference of this Magical Mirai figure from 2018. Now I chose this figure because it's both the same silhouette that I'm trying to replicate in terms of her skirt and leg wear, but it gives another colour palette that I can use if I run out of or can't find a similar colour or satin for the fabric that I need for the actual skirt. Then is the references of Chisato Morotaka herself. Uh, I'm not too confident in trims yet, nor am I comfortable in working with satins. So making a Seiko Matsuda replica dress is probably not the best course of action for today. So we will be reworking this outfit. The main point of contention for me is the actual skirt of this particular Chisato Moritaka outfit. Luckily for me, there are multiple versions of the skirt, so I should be able to find as many reference photos as- And they're all slightly different. Okay, realistically, the overskirt is not an issue for me. I really just need a circle skirt or a double circle skirt, or at least I'll test with a circle skirt um, and then see if I need to do um, an A-line skirt instead. The thing that is tripping me up is the petticoat or the underskirt and how many layers it goes down. This again is where the fact that each skirt is slightly different affects me. This skirt, which is used for two of the four outfits, has at least six layers as it seems to me. And some of that is comprised of netting, including the top layer that we're supposed to see. There's a thin layer of tulle and then a second layer of an opaque non-tulle layer. It doesn't quite look like organza, but it prob probably could be something similar. Followed by probably three layers of tulle, thus making six layers. Then, let's assume there might be an extra layer of satin or something to put separation between the tulle 
the chul and the idle as not irritate her legs, much like with many petticoats there are. So there might be seven layers, which when thinking of the way to make skirts cupcake like, it makes sense. This one, however, shows what seems to be less layers, but a stiffer fabric underneath. I know the color grading makes it look like all these others, but this one in particular is the white and blue one. As you can see the pleating on the front of the skirt, if you don't believe me. <laughs> then lastly is this one, which is the yellow and blue one, which seems to be solely tulle underneath like a tutu, maybe with a thin layer of netting between the tulle and the overskirt to give it structure to appear similarly cupcakey to the other two skirts. Realistically, I'd make the last one, but I wanted to see logistically how I could make the first one, how many layers it would actually, ha actually have, and most importantly, how does it actually move? Thus, I need to see a live performance of Moritaka in the outfits. Turns out, these outfits are from a song called 17 Sai, I don't know the Japanese word for 17 or 17 years old as Google Translate says. Both the live performance and the promotional video show off how the dresses move and thus I've decided which dress I'd recreate. It was the yellow one. Of course it was the yellow one. I did want I did want to attempt the pink one. But we're doing the full jewel skirt. I'm not putting fucking netting in my skirts. Netting is my worst enemy and you'll have You'll, you'll see how much I fucking hate netting when I get to my Poison Ivy cosplay later in the year. So, let's plan the skirt itself. So seeing as the last couple of times I've tried to make a tulle skirt has absolutely fucked me in the ass, um, I decided to look at actual references of tulle skirts and then find a tutorial online. I decided I'd do a three layer system of tulle with the top layer being the shortest and the bottom layer being the longest, obviously, thus making the cupcake effect. I then realized I didn't know what measurements I'd be doing, so I, as I said, went and found a tutorial online. I found this tutorial by Kira Lee Cosplay. Fun fact, they were one of the judges from CRX uh, at the cosplay parade that I participated in, which was actually quite funny to stumble upon after the fact when <laughs> I saw the <coughs> YouTube name. <coughs> I'm using this specific tutorial by Kira Lee Cosplay. They're an Australian cosplayer. The link will obviously be in the description down below as well as in the iCard with my playlist of um, helpful tutorials, including my, some of my own tutorials um, of cosplay and how to make certain cosplay items, props, outfits, etc. It will be there. Anyway, I decided to follow that. Um, I also bought several large spools of jewel off of eBay. You can get it from Spotlight, but you can only get about 25 yards or about 18 meters uh, from Spotlight. And it's very, very soft. Um, if you get it from eBay, it's significantly harder, pro probably because it's a harder polyester, but you can get a hundred yards which is obviously about four times the amount uh, that you can get at Spotlight and it's decently cheap. It's like, I want to say $12 per roll. I could be wrong because I bought it with Afterpay, so I don't know the actual amount. <laughs> but I bought two large white rolls and uh, one large teal roll as well as one 15 meter roll of aqua because I couldn't tell if it was teal or aqua I needed it was teal that on top of the two rolls that I got from spotlight initially the these are the rolls that I got with my dye for my Waluigi hat I was a fool to think that, that amount of tulle could have done me any sort of good. I then painstakingly spent an entire day sewing four layers of skirt. The first layer I sewed with the two spools from Spotlight before promptly finishing off the teal one with the first layer because of how you're supposed to do the petticoats with the first layer being double the length of your waist, whereas the second layer is triple the length of the 
first layer and the third layer being triple the length of the second layer but I ended up making it four times the length because I free handed it and didn't pin anything because my brain just does not like pins and shawl. After the first day that is when I realized um, I needed a lot more and luckily because I bought it on eBay and ordered, I don't think I ordered, no I did order express shipping. Because I ordered it from eBay and ordered express shipping, I got it sent to me really, really fucking quickly, as in within four days. Um, I very much appreciate that, because if I had ordered it with Spotlight, it would have taken me two weeks. So, <laughs> I did not have that time. Each skirt took me about two to four hours to make, depending on which like layer I did um, usually it would take me like at the very least half an hour to do the middle layer to the top layer but the bottom layer to the middle layer took me about an hour and a half to do because of how fucking much tool there was for it um, then was the unraveling and then was the fact that I was also filming at the same time so it like made the entire process significantly more difficult for me to do and I was very very tired after sewing three triple layered fucking pieces of fabric so yeah I had four like rows not four rows I had four skirts done by the end of the day a fifth one that I wanted to make on the day after but I am uh, genuinely too sick genuinely too sick to do it um, I had intended to sew days before that um, however one the chore did not come in until um, that specific day and two um, I had the worst migraine plus a cough plus I was sneezing a bunch and I had an ear infection, so I was not having a good fucking time. This was like my good day, where I was ready to do stuff and was forced to do stuff because I had to do it, otherwise I would fail because this was an assessment. I also, during this time, got my Hatsune Miku wig. I also got this off of eBay um, because I can't afford a good, good wig whatsoever. So I will be trying to style that at some point in the future. Anyway, going back to the point of this video, actually telling you guys what I did with this dress. As you saw, I made about four or five layers of skirt. Um, now, you only saw me make about four. I, I say that I filmed an extra section of me adding a fifth layer to it. But that is because uh, I, between the fourth and the fifth made layer made the lining. Now I used a recycled fabric for the lining. This being recycled from a previous um, petticoat that I made. That being the one that was ingrained into my first dress. You'll have to watch that video for context. But I ironed out the fabric and discovered that there is a silk setting on my iron which I was so so very pleased about because I thought I was going to melt all the silk. I then zigzag stitched around three of the edges while rolled hemming the fourth edge. The fourth edge would have been the bottom of the actual skirt. I later changed this by cutting the area with the rolled hem uh, up by about three centimeters because it was just slightly too long but it's better to be too long than too short so I cut that section and then rolled hemmed it again I really should have um, burnt the edges for the under lining um, just because there is threads that are coming out of it I also should have done this for the actual skirt itself but we'll get into that I then measured a elastic to my waist and cut and serrated that. Didn't add it immediately because I needed to actually add the lining to the skirt or the layers of the skirt, should I say. And I did that by sewing all the skirt layers together um, in one big, big loop and I measured each points, uh, like the back point to the front of oh, 
sorry, the back points together, the front points together, and the side points together. I did this one at a time, not all at once, just because it's the most like efficient way. I then, once all of that was sewn together, added the lining in in the middle. Once again, connected all the points, and I had to make sure that I got the points right because I added a leg slit in this lining, mainly because I didn't have enough fabric to actually make a proper long or proper lining for my measurements. So the leg slit was the next best option, which honestly it was. However, I do have to re-go over that uh, slit and re-sew sections, mainly just because when I actually put on this cosplay, it ripped a little further. So I do need to mend that. I was told I must touch grass and I just ripped my skirt. Hello, dog. I then sewed the lining to the actual skirt. And that is where I put in the elastic. Now the elastic I put over the top, it isn't the most like aesthetically pleasing. However, it was the only way that uh, I could do that comfortably. Plus the elastic of the skirt isn't gonna be seen by literally anyone but me. So I was happy having it a little, be a little bit messy. Now moving on to the actual skirt itself. It is a really, really stupid simple skirt. I just made a circle skirt with satin. I made my own pattern for the circle skirt. And by that, I mean, I put all of my measurements into a circle skirt calculator and got the pattern, then handmade the pattern based on those measurements from the pattern maker. Um, but yes, I made a circle skirt out of satin, then proceeded to make a waistband out of the same satin, the same size as the waistband of the skirt, the actual skirt section, then threading through a piece of elastic that was the actual size of my waist and that all gathered together to make the skirt that I have. I had originally wanted to make it um, a skirt with like a really structured waistband however upon testing it didn't dawn on me that I needed a zip for that kind of waistband or a button for that kind of waistband and I was already way overdue for the actual assessment that I need to do so I was like no I'm not doing that I'm especially not doing um, a satin skirt a material that I have yet to work with with a zipper something that is notoriously difficult to put into a skirt. So I chose an elasticated waistband instead and personally I think it turned out significantly better. It does still have that thick waistband effect that I wanted. The only difference is now it's ruched instead of, um, or it's gathered really, instead of being like nice and sitting straight, but that's something I kind of have to live with. And now we move on to the jacket. Now the jacket was supposed to go from a blazer to a cropped blazer, which would end up being a shirt. I, for the life of me, hate every single bloody seam on this goddamn jacket. You see, this is my first time altering a jacket. I have altered shirts and I have upcycled shirts by just completely deconstructing them and then reconstructing them. I have never once touched a blazer. So this was the first time for me deconstructing a blazer and I was terrified. And as I said before, this is my first time actually working properly with satin. And I had intended to put satin onto the blazer. So I spent an unfortunate amount of time um, figuring out how to put satin over the pre-existing structures of the blazer, that being the collar and the lapel. I ended up getting to putting all the satin and pinning the satin and sewing about 60% of the satin to the actual blazer before I realized that I could do a blanket stitch or a hidden stitch 
to make the seams look significantly nicer but at that point I'd already sewed on most of the satin I wasn't about to deconstruct it for the purposes of this assignment especially since it was due so close to um, when I was recording this so every single seam on the satin sections of the cropped jacket which mind you I first thing I did was cut off the lower portion I marked cut off the lower portion of the jacket and then worked on the satin the satin when I first tried it onto the um, collar I didn't realize how slippery and I knew how much how slippery it was but I didn't realize how much it would twist so I sewed one section onto the collar then realized that the collar inside would not sit right within the satin because I'd cut too little satin for the collar meaning that the satin was twisting as was the collar so I had to cut into the back of the collar add an extra section of satin then realizing that I'd sewn it wrong and should have put the satin underneath the pre-existing satin to not make it look like I've just added an extra square to my cosplay but luckily that section could be hidden because it is the underside of the collar which means that it is the section that would be folded over then I go to put the satin on the lapel the lapel is incredibly angular satin is not now don't get me wrong I love how it looks and I love or I love how it looks from afar and I love the theory of adjusting the jacket I just hate how I've sewn it onto the bloody blazer so as I was sewing in the last section I noticed that there was some overhang on the lapel so I tried pulling up the satin because it was twisting and there was too much satin for the lapel and then it dawned on me that I could use a blanket stitch to hide the really unseemly seam um, that was underneath where I was designing to sew and make a faux seam that being a section of the fabric that looks like a seam but is actually just the fabric folded in on itself then realized that I couldn't do that for both sides and just went, fuck it, I am not touching this lapel anymore because it already looks awful. The top of it is rolling over when I really could have just done a blanket stitch on the top of it and I'm really, really mad. So I turned my attention to the bias instead to cover up the rough hem from when I had cut off the excess at the bottom of the jacket this excess was used to make the hem so the outer section of the area that I cut off I ironed so had sewn together because the like flap at the back was in two sections it's really hard to explain but if you know suit jackets you know exactly what I'm talking about and um, I sewed that together, ironed it, and used it as bias. Now, once again, the twisting problem made itself prevalent because I was using a curved piece of fabric. I managed to get away from this issue just by folding over pieces of the fabric and hiding the unseem unseemly bits on the inside of the fabric. Speaking of the inside of the fucking fabric, um, the bias was uneven so I had to whip stitch around the entire thing. Now something that I have left out for you to do with the bloody satin is that um, with the hidden parts on the cosplay when I was trying to sew it down I realized if I used my sewing machine that the hemline would show or, that the stitching would show on the satin on the other side so it dawned on me shit I need to hand stitch a lot of this backing so that's what I did I spent roughly six hours hand stitching different sections of this fucking cosplay and I am so angry because it looks awful again from afar it looks fine up close god do I want to just burn it i'm not going to because i spent too much time on it but i want to burn it so i was not too happy to whip stitch around the inside bias of my jacket but it's not gonna be seen 
it's completely fine. And then it dawned on me that I needed a buttonhole. Now to be fair, this is me um, recording it before I add the fucking buttonhole because I have a reason why I hate this specific jacket so much. The skirt itself, beautiful, fine. The petticoat, I adore, I love it. But that is because I got to do practice pieces for both. You've seen in previous videos me try to make a new petticoat before and it just not working. That's because I never had enough tulle. This time I bought enough tulle so I can actually make a decent petticoat. And I did make a decent petticoat and I used recycled materials for my last petticoat. That being the lining fabric and I adore it. As I said, I had attempted to make a stiff waistband for my skirt. That was my practice piece for the circle skirt. I didn't want to cut into my good fabric, so I cut into one of the many, many, many other pieces of satin fabrics that I had, which resulted in a really, really nice skirt. I, however, did not have an extra blazer to work on. Thus, I did not have fabric to practice with. And if you have kept along with a lot of my cosplay making um, videos, you would know that I tend to make a practice piece along with my good piece. I made it with my Sailor Moon cosplay. My Sailor Moon cosplay was technically a precursor to my Waluigi cosplay, which was my practice piece. Um, I did multiple practice uh, swatches of my embroidery for Waluigi. I made practice pieces for the gloves for Waluigi. I always make practice pieces alongside my actual finished cosplay. But with only one blazer and a very limited amount of satin, I could not do that with this cosplay. Thus, it ended up a fucking mess. Now, I will say, in the future, I am going to be recreating this cosplay significantly better because I now know what to do. However, what I need to obtain is a new blazer of a roughly similar colour. I also need to obtain satin of a roughly similar colour because the satin that I have was second hand. And I now only have one little, little, little rectangle of it that would only be enough to cover one lapel section of a blazer. So I need at least a meter of the exact same satin and I do not know where to get it because the satins that I found at Spotlight do not exactly match the colour of this cosplay so I may need to remake it completely from scratch. That being said, I am not making my own blazer. Maybe in the future I will, just not today. But let's move on to the button making. Or, sorry, the Did button I hole. say buttons? Uh, I lied. I put in snaps instead. And this time, instead of putting in, like, hammer-in snaps, I put sew-in snaps because I was still working with the fucking satin. Um... I had decided against putting satin on the cuffs, like in my OG design, um, it was a little too much with the satin skirt and the satin lapel and collar. Um, I did also really like the pre-existing detailing on the cuffs itself, and I also didn't have enough satin to make any errors. That being said, what the fuck happened to the buttons, seeing as I liked the button detailing so much on the cuffs. Um, to be honest, when I put up the buttons for reattaching onto the satin, um, I realised how awful it looked and just went, nah, I need a way to connect this and have it like not showing anything and I just need the satin on top. So I decided to put in uh, stitch in snaps. So yeah. I'm gonna say I am going to continue working on this cosplay after this video. Obviously I'm really not happy with how parts of it turned out so plus there's things that I want to add still. But the reason I bring this up is because um, I again 
as is for a media assignment. I just needed to get it over and done with because at the time of recording, uh, my assignment is due in about a week and a half. So not even, it's due in a week and I haven't started f fucking editing, e editing it. And I really, really need to do that. Um, and I also really, really wanted to release a video this week. Thus, this really rushed version of my Hatsune Miku cosplay project. Technically, this is still a work in progress. However, I am just going to call it in this phase, done. That being said, here is some photos that I took of the incomplete cosplay. And I'm going to play them over me talking about what I need to add to this cosplay and what I would like to add to this cosplay. So first things first is props. So I am genuinely very lucky to have the mic that I have on loan. Otherwise, my concept would be royally screwed and especially my concept photos because I had planned to make a prop microphone out of recycled materials that I had around my house. I forgot about it until the day before I was shooting the photos. So, um, I am so incredibly lucky I had this mic. The only thing was I had to really rush um, my actual cosplay, uh, like doing the wig and all that stuff, because the literal day after, um, oh, literally the day of taking these photos and this footage, I had to take the mic back. Like I woke up at four o'clock so that I could clean my room and get prepared for a photo shoot so that I could use this goddamn microphone. <laughs> Um, so that's the thing that I'll be doing next for this cosplay, um, that, and I'm going to be seeing what, um, like, bedazzling the top of the collar would look like. As I said, I don't like the seams to the jacket whatsoever. Not at all. Um, and I told this to my mum, and she's like, you realise you can bedazzle it, right? I didn't particularly want to bedazzle my um, fucking jacket, um, but to be fair, the actual um, Chisato Morotaka outfit is pretty bedazzled, so it would fit. I'm gonna see how that looks. It is not guaranteed that I'm gonna keep that, and I am more likely going to just get another blazer in a similar color get satin in a similar color. I do have other blue satins that I might use, but none the exact like colors of my wig. So I will see how that happens. Next is leg detailing or extras for my outfit. Now for the photo shoot uh, and for the film, I decided to wear my like mermaid docks because I thought it was really cute. Um, and just added to the color scheme. However, in my initial concept designs, I wanted to wear heels and I wanted to make either thigh high, like leg stocking things, or I wanted to have little cuffs around my regular uh, little booties. What are they called? Little, little ankle cut heels. I know that's not the right word, but it's close enough. Oh yeah, I'm also going to hopefully get a better Hatsune Miku wig. Um, this was just the cheapest one I could get in the quickest amount of time. So yeah, um, I will say that I am going to be pushing back uh, this cosplay after I've finished with it, finished filming with it, because I... Um, want to work on Poison Ivy again. Uh, this time, not so much my actual Poison Ivy outfit. Um, no, I want to work on a uh, Christmas Poison Ivy because I'm going to Christmas Comic Con because my mum paid for the tickets. So I will be doing Poison Ivy at Comic Con, if not City Pop Hatsune Miku, but I really don't want the public to see City Pop Hatsune Miku in its current state. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs>
but yeah that's the end of my video thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll be back next week 10 a.m australian eastern standard time on a wednesday like every week and i hope to see you there thank you guys so much for watching once again and i love you bye is this how you do it is this how you touch grass what I can't tell what is grass and what is not. Can you help me, dog? Ah!